Today's video is all about orbital perturbations, and we have two objectives. The first is to understand how an orbit is affected by Earth's atmosphere and oblateness, and second is to describe the effect of Dragon J2 on each COE. So to begin with, we'll look back at the restricted two-body equation of motion. So here we describe a satellite's motion around the Earth using Newton's second law and the universal law of gravitation and a whole host of assumptions, which is why we called it the restricted two-body equation of motion. So one of those assumptions that actually breaks down over time, or particularly for satellites with lower orbits um, is that of drag being negligible. It turns out that drag is not quite negligible. Um, even if we had a satellite whose orbit apogee was significantly above the Earth's atmosphere, its perigee might be in a location where there's trace amounts of Earth's atmosphere. And as the satellite moves past this point, it's going to encounter those particles and slow down slightly. And that slowing down reduces the energy of our orbit and consequently reduces the size of our orbit, which is our semi major axis. So if we are allow this satellite to continue on this path, what we might find over time is that the satellite's size not only changes, but its orbital eccentricity, its shape also changes as well. So drag tends to both reduce the size and circularize our orbit over time, changing both A and E. The next assumption that we're going to look at is that of Earth being a perfect sphere. It turns out that Earth is not perfectly spherical, it's actually oblate. And that oblateness, or that bulge, something we're going to call the J2 effect, our equatorial bulge, is going to affect our right ascension and ascending node and our argument of perigee. It's going to cause those things to rotate. So even though we told you in previous lessons that those things are fixed for an orbit, uh, this J2 effect over time is going to tend to force our right ascension and ascending node to change and it's going to force our argument of perigee to change as well. There are, however, orbits that we, that we utilize that take advantage of this nodal regression and argument of perigee rotation rate or non-rate, uh, as you'll find in just a minute. Um, and the first one we're going to explore in detail is that of a sun-synchronous orbit. So a sun-synchronous orbit is an orbit wherein we want the satellite to go over a particular part of the ground at a particular time of day every day. And what we know is that the Earth is going to be rotating around the sun a full 360 degrees in approximately 365 days. So it's going to go a full year to get back around to where it's at. And if the orbit, if we didn't have a J2 effect, this, in order for the satellite's orbit to be passing over the same part of the ground at, at the same time of day, we would have to burn fuel to have our orbit shift slightly. But since we have that equatorial bulge and we can design our orbit appropriately, we can actually find an orbital inclination and altitude wherein we get that one degree per day shift approximately uh, for free, if you want to think of it that way. So I'll show you an animation of what that looks like here on this next slide. So here we have our sun synchronous orbit. And what you'll notice is the orbit is slightly shifting, it's slightly changing, it's precessing um, at exactly the same rate that the Earth is moving around the sun. And the net effect of this, if we, if we let this animation play out a little bit, is that you'll see our orbit is actually changing a little bit each day, every day. And so as we go around the sun, it's looking at the sun, we're passing over the same part of the ground at the same time of day every day. So there we go. Here's a chart of what that nodal regression rate would look like for various altitudes and inclinations. Our sun synchronous, we want it to be approximately one degree per day. So if we were looking at a satellite that had a thousand uh, kilometer altitude, that would be approximately right here on this yellow line. We could draw that over. So that's essentially what we would get for free. So what inclination do we need to have? Turns out sun synchronous orbits are approximately between 95 and 105 degrees. So slightly retrograde orbits are going to give us that um, sun synchronous kind of uh, behavior. Excellent. So let's talk about the perigee rotation. So this is something that's going to happen to our perigee as well. So what does a perigee rotation actually look like? Well, this is what our Earth, you have to imagine, sped up, would be spinning. And our perigee is going to move around where its location is going to be at um, every, uh, every day, slightly. 
And this is going to vary based on our altitude, just as our, our RAN did. But this is due to the equatorial bulge of the, uh, of the Earth. Well, there's particular orbits that actually take advantage of the fact that there are particular moments or particular places where that, um, essentially, that J2 effect is going to cancel itself out and we don't get that rotation. And one of those orbits is actually the Molniya orbit or the lightning orbit that the, that the Russians actually use. So this is a highly elliptical orbit. You can kind of see over here an animation or a picture of what that would look like. And our satellite's going to spend essentially 11 hours of its 12-hour period above this equatorial line. So most of its orbit's up here. And it comes down screaming down here past perigee and comes back over here. And what's useful about this orbit is it's at a particular inclination wherein you actually have zero amount of RAN changing, or re rather the argument of perigee changing per day. So that's at like essentially a 63.4 degree altitude. And that keeps perigee at the same spot because otherwise perigee would be rotating around and you wouldn't have the dwell time that you would, that you would want over Moscow or the U.S. As, as shown before. All right, so we've talked a little bit about what those atmospheric drag um, and uh, Earth's oblateness or J2 effect, what effect it has on our spacecraft. So hopefully you know that and can demonstrate that on a GR. Talk to you next time. Bye.